What's up? My name is Matt. This is Hidden Light. You have questions and I have answers. Today's question is about papers for platinum palladium printing. What's up? P what's up? Uh, <laughs> hi, Peter. So, I get this question a lot. And there are a lot of papers you can print platinum palladium on, actually. Basically, any paper that will hold up to being submerged in chemistry for as much time as you can give it is fine. A lot of papers, when you get them wet, turn into pulp. So a lot of papers are no good. There are a couple of papers that I've used that I think are reasonable, and each paper has its own effect or style that it applies to the image. <sighs> for beginners, people who are just starting with platinum palladium printing, I'm always gonna tell you to use a neutral paper. Don't use some crazy, heavy texture, really yellow paper to start. You want to see what the platinum palladium process will do to your image on its own before you start screwing around with crazy papers. That's my recommendation. So if you email me like, hey, I wanna make my first ever platinum print, what paper should I use? I'm always, always, always going to tell you Arche Platine. It's spelled arches, but apparently the French pronounce it Arche. It's really good. It's neutral. It's reasonably um, flat and not super crazy textured, and it's super easy to work with, which is why I always use it because it's amazing. It accepts chemistry really well. It works really easily in humidity. You don't have to be particularly gentle with it. That's like, that's my MO. I'm into it. There are other papers, and we're gonna talk about what some of those other papers are, what they look like, and what they do to your picture. There is a section on our website, a little Dropbox gallery that you can pull up, that show the same image in a couple of different papers. I made that years ago, and I have since lost some of the prints I used to make it. Uh, classic. So we're gonna do some of that here today without me having to remake every one of these because some of these papers really suck to work with. So we're gonna start top down. This is a piezography print. It does not have borders, right? And it is basically a neutral toned, untouched version of this file. It shows you effectively what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, don't mind my giant water droplet. These prints have been hanging out for a couple of years, so I've not been very nice to them. Uh, so consider that the starting point. This is what you'll see on your screen when you just pull up the file in Photoshop or Lightroom. This is Arch Platine. You can tell, well, you probably can't read it, but there is actually a uh, watermark up here, which is the bottom of the paper. And I printed the image upside down on it because that's the kind of freak that I am. This paper is very easy to work with, uh, is reasonably high contrast, is not particularly yellow. Like if you look at the paper base from here to here, they're pretty darn close. So, Neutral, easy to work with. Arch Platine is always my go-to. Once you've decided that you want to start getting experimental with your papers, this is Kozo. It's a Japanese paper. Um, whenever possible, I get it uh, from a supplier that makes it by hand. It's got these fibers in it. You can see, it's hard to see in some spots, but it's, it's much more fibrous and it's also got a sheen to it. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up on camera, but it's it's got this sheen at certain angles. I'll just kind of, you can kind of see it like from there to there as it reflects the light. It's got a sheen to it. Um, it also recently, I've been having a lot of problems like in the last five years with it giving me all these tiny little black dots. So I don't prefer to use Kozo anymore because of all those tiny little black dots. What are the tiny little black dots, you ask? That's a great question. I think that they're actually metal embedded in the fibers of the paper and it's absorbing platinum and reacting with it. So, um, and, and so I get these terrible black spots. Kozo, garbage Kozo that's machine made is the only paper that I know that consistently does this. So I've quit using it because it ticks me off. If you don't mind having a whole shitload of black spots in your image, let me know. <laughs> 
It's also reasonably simple to work with. It's got this crazy texture to it. It's really hard to see on camera. It's a very pretty paper. Um, all of these papers are two-sided. There's a smooth side, which is face up to the camera now. And then there is a rougher side, which I don't generally recommend printing on. Because it's really pretty. Um, this, God, that's the great thing about platinum prints is you can really just do that to them. And because the image is embedded in the fibers of the paper, you don't have to worry about it so much. This is a really thick toothed Gampy paper. Gampy comes in and actually really all of these papers come in different weights. Weight is typically expressed in GSM or grams per square meter. I think that's what that stands for. Um, so this is a really thick Gampy. They tend to be a little bit more fibrous, also like the Kozo. They're really pretty and they're really difficult to work with. They don't like being submerged. Um, most people who go the Gampy route go towards a much thinner, almost a tissue paper, like a 60 GSM or an 80 GSM, very lightweight. This is like 310 or 270. It's a much thicker paper and um, it's very pretty. It's much warmer than Arsh. It's hard to tell, but it's got like a yellow rather than like a, um, a standard platinum. It, it's shifting like closer to a bleached out sepia than like the warmth of a platinum print. Uh, and it also has mostly a, a smooth side and a less smooth side. On camera, if I angle it the right way, you might be able to see these vertical lines in the paper that are uh, come from it being manufactured. Kind of shows you the tooth of the paper, the texture. Something like that. Um, yellower, warmer, and this is on a neutral development. So I, I, did, I developed all of these at room temperature. If you take this paper and push it to hot development, so like 100 and whatever degrees, it gets very warm, like hyper sepia. The next paper is a different image because I lost <laughs> the print that I had. <laughs> Sadness. Uh, this is a Weston parchment paper. And so on camera now, you can see one, it's got that sheen, that beautiful fibrous sheen, which can give you what appears to be a darker black when you light it right. But you can also see how like super screwed up and crumply and crazy it looks. This is another paper that's really, really difficult to deal with. Um, but if you get a good print and you have to like in order to print this paper, you have to support it on a substrate. So I can't just pick up this piece of paper and put it from place to place. I actually have to put it on window screen material and transfer it from tray to tray. It's very annoying. Um, but you can flatten it. And so here's the unflattened and here's the flattened version. So much less crazy looking and a little bit more sort of normal. This is a thumbprint from where I picked up the piece of paper and it physically removed the fibers of the paper. So it's much more fragile. Um, but golly, it's pretty. It's, it's again warmer still, and this is um, still room temperature development. This paper will not hold up to heated development in my experience. It just disintegrates. Um, I don't love working with this and I don't recommend it unless you have a very specific purpose and you want to run an entire edition at a time. I will charge you more for papers that make me want to kill myself. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, moral of the story. Arch Platine, excellent. Reeves BFK, absolutely. Hanamule Platinum Rag, 100%. Now, the Reeves and the Hanamule, I find to be slightly more difficult to work with. Uh, there's something about the way that they accept chemistry or the way that um, your brush strokes tend to show up more on those papers than in Arch Platine. So I don't prefer to work with them. They are my secondary choice. I will work with them if I have to. You can typically tell, I don't have a, an example, uh, but you can see how my brush marks on this, which is an Arch print look, the Hanamule paper almost absorbs the chemistry in such a different way that you can actually tell what it looks like. You can tell a paper has been printed on Hanamule just by 
what it looks like in the brushstroke areas of a platinum print. So um, I don't have any examples of that because I don't work with it because I prefer the Arsh. But those three are like the three reasonably simple, easy to work with, neutral, good alternatives that I recommend. And then if you want to get experimental, you start dealing with the handmade, the Kozo, the parchment paper, all that kind of stuff. Wow, that's a lot of words. Anyway, uh, now you know about paper and platinum. The same things apply to every alt process because they all involve a lot of wetness. Um, you can also do this on vellum if you're going to do like the gold tone stuff. I don't do that, so I'm not going to show it to you because I don't want to show you things I don't do. Anyway, any questions, comments, concerns, drop those in the comment section down below and uh, we'll see you in the next one. What's up?